says, good morning. Uh, Papa here. Uh, this is Sunday. And uh, but we're not going to have a Sunday dinner today. Uh, G and Kim, uh, some of you may not know, are still gone. They'll be back, hopefully, this evening. Uh, maybe tonight. Uh, they got... They had car trouble. They rented a car and ended up having car trouble uh, in Atlanta. And uh, was going to try to rent another car, take, turn that one back in and get another one. But then this morning they got up to go do that. And they said, well, the car's running so good, we're headed home. I hope that was not a mistake. I hope. I don't know. Uh, I think they should have took the time and got another car. But anyway, they didn't. And uh, she called, and they're on their way home. Dan called me early, and he said, Dad, uh, there's not going to be anybody around for lunch today, so I think him and Lou is going to stop and get something to eat, and they'll bring me something. And I said, you ain't got to bring me nothing. I got, I got food. I know how to cook. I <laughs> uh, went out early this morning, had my coffee with Heidi. And right now, I'm folding clothes. I did the laundry. Well, Ben and I did the laundry. And uh, I'm going to fold clothes so you don't come home to a big basket full of clothes. Uh, I dusted yesterday. And uh, I guess y'all saw that. Uh, Ben vacuumed. Uh, I think everything is nice just like she left it. Maybe better. It's dusted. But uh anyway, it's just it's just gonna be a little bit different today, I hope. Uh at these guys you know one day, one day like all of us, you know, G and I won't be around. Now, I hope these guys keep the 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 dinners going i hope they don't just say okay well, mom and dad are not around so we're just not gonna have them because it's it's such a good thing uh my mom before she passed loved coming uh it was she loved to come for our dinners and and, and naturally she always did and uh she always wished that all the other kids would gather up for the dinners you know but uh, we've always had Sunday dinners and I want these guys to keep that going. And I got all my little boys here with me, uh, gathered around. They don't want to work. They don't want to fold clothes. And I think cuz is going to come over and spend some time with me this afternoon. That'd be, that'd be fun. But it, it, it's different. And I want you guys to stop grieving. Uh, so many, so many sweet, sweet, sweet comments. And, and, and you guys are grieving like me. Don't do it. Uh, there's no need all of us doing it. Okay? Uh, I watched the, the Sunday morning video this morning. And my girl went swimming. And I love that. Anyway, you don't want to see me folded clothes, so I'm going to cut this off and uh, get out and, and, and feed up. And uh, we'll video of something outside okay i love you guys i uh thought this morning when i'm folding these clothes i'd uh tell you a story about my old dog biter and uh biter biter came to us uh dan brought that biter home and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of background you remember Hurricane Katrina over in Louisiana? And I'm pretty sure that's where Biter come from. Uh, 
He was an old bird dog. Wasn't nothing special about Vider. He's an old dog. Vider already had gray around his muzzle. Call it a muzzle, I guess. Right. <laughs> like like me. Like me, gray. Yeah. But Vider. Dan called me from. Dan was on his job. Go back there. Dan was on his job over there. A lot of work being done over there on the, on the highways and interstate there after Katrina. Uh, a lot of stuff got washed up and washed out and stuff. And and his company had a big project going. And Dan was a project manager. So he had to drive back and forth because he didn't want to stay. It would been a lot easier on him to stay. But Dan, Dan's a homeboy. Kind of like me. He likes to come home. And he'd leave early, early in the mornings. As, you know, it cost him the company truck and everything. Uh, and drive over to his office and, and do what he had to do. And then uh, drive back home and be late, late getting home. But he calls me one day. And he says, Dad, he says, there's... An old dog over here, hanging around our office. He says he comes in here. He says he's coming here. Been here for about a, a week. He like he's lost, and he says uh, he's a good dog, smart dog, but he said he just hangs out here. And he says these guys are giving him scraps from their lunches every day. When they they come back from lunch, they bring him stuff. They all go to eat. And some of them ain't brought their lunches. Whatever, though, they'd always give Vider scraps. And he didn't have that name then. I, I gave him that name. Because there's, their office was in Vider. You know, this this side of the border uh, from Louisiana where their offices were. And, uh, but he said, I'd like to bring him home. He says, you know, he says, uh, I feel sorry for him. Dan's got a soft heart, like, like Lester, like L.E. Yeah, I guess a little bit like me. Yeah. So I said, well, that's, that's good, but I said, I don't, I don't need a dog. I, I, I don't need a dog. You know, we got a couple of little dogs around here. I don't need a, need a dog. We brought him home. I'm pretty sure those belong to Ben. <laughs> they too big for me. And when he got out of the truck, Vider hops out. Immediately, he saw a guinea. He took off there. And Daniel hollered at him, you know, don't mess with guineas. Pop all the guineas. <laughs> don't mess with his guineas. And it got on to him. Good. Got on to him. And then he walks him over here. And, uh, uh, hang on, this is this is Heidi's. One of Heidi's blankets she would lay on pads. Hang on, I gotta get this done. Oh, uh, put it right there. Brought him over here to the porch, and I'm sitting here on the porch, and they come on the porch, and Vider walks up to me, and I pet him, you know, and it's like uh, immediately he thought in his mind that, well, this is who I'm going to be living with. So Dan is going to leave. He don't follow Dan off. He sits there beside me. And I told Dan, I don't really need a dog, son. I, yeah, but Dad, look at him. Look at him, Dad. He, look at him. He, he likes you. <laughs> well, your mama likes me sometimes, Dan, but that don't mean nothing. But anyway, uh, I really didn't want him. I, I, I really didn't. I didn't want to get attached to another dog. Uh, it hadn't been too long since we had lost little Milo, my little Chinese pug, and I just didn't want to uh, get hooked up with another dog. So when it comes, the weekend was over. I said, I'd, I'd rather you take him back. I, you know, I, I did. I said, you know, I don't know why I was thinking like I was thinking, but that's just. It's just something I just didn't want to fool with another dog. So he took him. And uh, 
I take it back. I take it back. I didn't send it back. Uh, Fourth of July weekend was coming up, and Dan said, Dad, there's not going to be nobody there, you know, for a long weekend. Could just keep him till the weekend's over, and then I'll take him back. Is there well, nobody, nobody there to feed him? All right. Well, needless to say, time of the weekend was over, every time I went out that door, if I didn't come in, he, he was not an inside dog. I don't, he, he didn't want to come in. You know, that, I, I go back to think it may have been, he may have got trapped in a house and all that flooding, and that's why he didn't want to come in the house. I had cats that wouldn't come in this house for a while. It, those little cats I had upstairs. Uh, when our house flooded, I had two little cats upstairs, and for weeks, even after we got moved back in, they wouldn't come downstairs. There's, there's, there was a fear down here. And finally, they ventured back down. But, uh, so, my friend Larry was over, and he said, I got a big doghouse, a real good doghouse, made out of redwood. It's all nice. He said, let me bring it over here for a bite. He says, y'all have a good doghouse. and fine. That's, that's good. Anyway, we, <clears throat> the weekend was over. I had somewhat somewhat got used to him following me around out there and uh i told dad all right dad just 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 leave him you know he'll it, be okay it ain't no problem he ain't no bother he wasn't bothering nothing and uh so dad left him and better become my dog and he went everywhere i went he he was smart but he was never We've never had a dog as smart as Heidi, and that's that's God's honest truth. Uh, never had one as smart as Heidi. She, and she will tell you that. She's told so many people we talk about Heidi. Never do we have a dog as smart as Heidi. Uh, she would look you in the eye. It was like eye contact, and and listen to what you said, and just about no what you was telling her and she'd go do it if you wanted to do something she'd do it and that that was amazing to me but Bader was a smart dog and I got the dog house and I put a uh when winter came I put a light bulb in it it, it was out there on the pavilion the dog house was and uh I'd feed him out there and I kept water out there for him and I come out the door in the morning he was here he come he was ready you know for the day but, uh, so he come, whoever had had him evidently had taught him well. And, and I, I always wondered about that. You know, wonder what happened. Did he lose his, his owners? They lose him. Did something happen to them during all that flooding? You know, a lot of folks died over there. There's a lot of strays on the highways from over that area. You know, it didn't have, didn't have our people no more. But Bader was old and, and I, I took him to the vet, had him checked out and he was all okay on everything. But uh, he was just old and the vet told me his old teeth was all wore down and uh, I have no idea how old Vider was. But Vider lived with us about three years. And uh, you could just tell he was kind of going downhill. Got to where he didn't want to go nowhere. He'd lay out there by his doghouse. He'd come out to visit when he first come out, but he wasn't going to go very far. And uh, he would ride. He'd get on a mule and ride. In fact, we have a picture somewhere when Lex was just a baby. Bider's laying on a mule. He didn't sit up like Heidi and look where we was going. He just lay down. And Lex is sitting on top of him. Or lay, kind of, I've got Lex in my arms, I think, laying kind of on top of Bider. He, he loved kids. He didn't bother kids. He was a good dog. But Bider passed away uh, after about three years and uh, just drifted away. And uh, we, you know, but he was a good dog. And it wasn't too long after that. I guess she 
uh, felt like I needed a, an outside dog or, or a big dog. Not, not an outside dog, but a big dog. So she told me one day, she says, why don't we get, look around and try to find a big dog for you that can stay in the house. But she says, and I'm thinking, oh Lord, here we go. House breaking another dog. Whew, I don't want to do that. But we sat down and we'd look at different dogs and, and we talked about a dog that wouldn't shed. You know, German Shepherds was one of our first thoughts, but I said, they shed. Little Milo had a little Chinese pug shed like crazy. It was constantly vacuuming up. We can vacuum up hair, nothing but hair. It's like a little dog could have so much hair, but she did. So I says, get something that don't shed as bad. I mean, all dogs, I guess, shed, some. And we thought about a Rockwilder. Well, my friend David had a Rockwilder, and they're beautiful dogs, beautiful dogs. But David's, and maybe not all of them did, but David's dog slobbered all the time, slobbered. Just, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't want one slobbered. Well, what about a Doberman? So we researched Dobermans. And I said, yeah, that Doberman would be awesome. I said, they're they, they supposed to be smart. You know, they use them for police dogs and guard dogs and stuff like that. And uh, so we started looking for Dobermans. And so I'm kind of getting away from Vider into Heidi, but... Uh, and we found her. But anyway, that's a different story altogether. We'll talk about it one day, too. But Vider, Vider was a good dog. He was just an old bird dog type. He was black, a little bit of white on his forehead, and I think he had a little white spot or two on him. Uh, slim, little slim built dog. Uh, probably weighed 50, 60 pounds, you know. But, uh, Gray, gray and around here, which, which is normal, just because he's getting old. But he was a good dog. And you know, I told you I'd tell y'all about Vider. So I finished folding clothes. I'm going to put mine away. I'm going to leave Ben's here. So I'll set them on, on the bed there for dogs that have them scattered everywhere. And I'm going to go back out and have another cup of coffee with Heidi. I've already had one with her. I'm going to take this one out and sit with her. Then I'm going to feed up. Okay? I got some good ideas for out here. Uh, I need to probably spray this fence with some. Uh, wait, I, I'm trying to talk right now. Just, just in a minute, okay? In a minute. Hang on, hang on, folks. Uh, I probably need to spray that fence with some bleach. It's got mildew like on it, and that might that might bleed through. That might bleed through. You're gonna be as bad as some other girls. I always want to show you a little booty. <laughs> Move! Ah. Oh, Lord. Uh, it might bleed through the paint. I don't know. Let me try to paint. Hang on. Leave that alone. He's just going to chew on everything. Uh, uh, anyway, I've got some good ideas on, on the little grave site itself. <clears throat> I'm going to build a taller, try to explain this to you if I can, uh, and I'll turn this I'm going to build a taller, like a 2 by 12 treated on that fence, you know, the length of her grave. And then I want to slope it. It's all treated wood. Slope it down to the uh, maybe like a two by six on the front. It's like a six inch drop sloped. Now I'll level that dirt out, okay, and uh, make it lower than the the farm, the little two by treated wood I put around it. It'll be lower. And then I I'm either going to fill that in with with uh, mulch. Uh, colored mulch, I think, would be pretty. Or I may even, I may even put a little concrete slab, sloping a concrete slab. I, I'm not sure. I think uh, the slab would forever protect her, which she'll be protected anyway. But the mulch would be, I think, prettier, and I can replace it when it starts to dull down and keep her pretty. And folks have talked about putting flowers along the fence line here. Yeah, I think that would be pretty too. 
and I'll put her name up here. And uh, it's a beautiful place. It's peaceful. And uh, she got all her friends. Cows eat hay right outside this fence at night. The goats are right yonder. They eat hay at night and right there. Unless it's raining, the goats won't come out and rain. Cows don't care. And then Ivan and Miracle are right through here. I don't know, 40, 50 foot. And Sophie and little Cuddles and her little sister are right in here. So she's got she got her friends basically all the way around her. And then she got all these guys that play out here all day. And the cats stay out here at night. Uh, so there's cats out here all night long. Uh, I've come out here at night to have coffee. And Mama Cat's right here in this chair here asleep. And uh, Mick was over on that table, which Mick come in later. But he was out. So that means that shows you they're out here all the time. So she's got her friends here with her. And that was the difference than being down there by the big pine tree, which was a beautiful place. But there would be times she would be alone. So I think we made a good choice. All right, I'm going to go sit here, guys, and, and, and just visit with these guys and visit with her. Everything's fed up. Everything's turned out. Uh, I talked to Dan about that hole that Billy's dug down there on the uh, by that pole and Dan's going to go down after a while and fill it in even put some rock around it and if that don't stop him I'll be able to fence around it and hopefully the light company don't complain uh, keep him off that pole he's big Billy's big 2,000 pounds maybe a little bit more and when he starts shoving on stuff something's going to give a little bit and he's like a bulldozer <laughs> he gets kind of crazy Thankfully, thankfully, he's, he's gentle. And then I got this little guy here. Yeah, I got Woody. I had all of them be over me again last night. Oh, boy. It's a... Trying to referee him and him and that little Jensen that in there. The Jensen wants to get up close. Woody don't want him up close. And here you're trying to sleep, and they want to fight. Jensen got to learn. Jensen got to learn. He don't belong here all the time, does he, Woody? We just, he's company. He's just company. All right, I'm going to cut this off. And uh, maybe Cuz comes over, I'll put it with this. This is going to be our Sunday video. And I uh, hope you guys will enjoy it. Cuz, Cuz came over. Uh, he's over by, with Dan right now looking at his little miniature cows. And I can't wait till he comes back. And these little guys here, little guys here, mess with him. <laughs> we're we're here visiting with Heidi, both of us. Uh, he likes where I put her. This is an awesome place. We talked about what I want to do for, and. Uh, Anyway, we're having a good, just a good visit, just to talk about stuff, you know. We didn't go back to back today. Uh, it would have been funny to go back there, but I wanted to, we stopped here to look at her and just sat down here and talk. And, uh, but she'll enjoy that, just sitting here by her, chatting. But next time we'll probably go down there and let Ivan and them pick on him a little bit. I'm hoping when he comes back, him little goats come up and hop in his lap. That's what he needs. But Dan wanted to show him his calves, so they went over to look at those. And uh, it's getting a little chilly. I want to put this old work jacket on. I got a couple of chores. I've been worked in the hen house a little bit a while ago. I didn't go to church today. Uh, G and Kim and Levi are on their way home. Should be here tonight if they don't have no car trouble. They, they didn't turn that car in like I told them. They took off on their own, headed on. They called 
hour or so ago there in Louisiana. They should be here, she said, about 6 or 7 tonight. I think we're going to have that supper at Dan's at about 7. We didn't have Sunday dinner today. So uh, everybody kind of on their own today. Dan offered to go buy me something for dinner. He said, come over and we'll go get something eat with us. I said, no, I don't, I don't really want anything. I'm good. All right, here comes Dan in the back. Hang on. I can't. Now, now, have a seat, Kev. These little guys want to visit with you. Huh? These little guys want to visit with you. Oh, no. <laughs> no. They ain't visiting no, with me. No, you already said she needed to be a hamburger. Huh? You already said Miracle needs to be a hamburger. Hush, dogs. Yeah, but that's before you had all the problems. Going well, it's okay, way. bud. My problems don't have nothing to do with your, your attitude towards little old Ivan and Miracle and little well, Duke. Well, he needs to be on the back side of his post. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Them dogs are dancing. Oh, God, <laughs> Almighty, no. <laughs> love that baby. I am love that baby. I am <laughs> I love not. I love it. Hush, dog. Stop. Stop barking. Okay, well, I love that. I love that. You can do it anytime you want to. You can do it anytime you want to. <laughs> Is that as big as they supposed to be? I hope. I hope there's these two are here. There's something else. But they chew on everything they can find, any kind of piece of paper. Yeah, she's chewing on it. Yeah, yeah. Right now. It's constant. I'm constantly pulling stuff out of their mouths that they don't need to. Uh, leave that alone. Go. Uh, David had some of them things over there. He had a little billy goat that was supposed to be in. But evidently he had some different goat in him because he bred one or two of them little ones. Every one of them had trouble having them. Yeah, they will. Yeah, and yeah. then one of them, she died trying to have them. Yeah, baby. yeah. That's, someone said, can't you put them with your goats? It's no. It's no one big no. goat's supposed to breed them and kill them. Yeah, it's trying to have them babies. babies. I had a big hound that time, Daddy. I had her shut up because she's in heat. Daddy turned her out, thought she was out of heat, and that he had no big black dog there. Uh, about the big that red bone. And he bred her. Yeah. And then she couldn't have blind puppies. Yeah. She done got down out there in the field down there. For, I guess she she would have died if but Fern couldn't stand it. Her and Gabby couldn't stand it. So they grabbed her up and put her in the truck and took off the vet. Yeah, that was back in seventy. It cost me three hundred dollars to get the yeah, oh, yeah. out of her. Yeah. Yeah. I I had to take one to Doctor Birch, one of my pugs. Back, you know, way yeah. back, uh, he was good. Old Doctor Birch is good. Yeah, right, right. local too. He's local, yeah, you know. And uh, I had one. I had. She had endangered child. Uh, Harris, I, I, I BS, it, one lady. zero Y O A, eighty nine pounds, wearing a pink shirt with a design on it and black pajama pants. Call the Houston Police Department oh, at 832-394-1840. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I anyway, I had to take the Dr. Birch because she had a puppy that was like crossways. Not, not quite breached. Uh, not quite yet. He had to <clears throat> do a C-section. Yeah. Or, or, or the whole bunch would have died, you know? Yeah. You know, they, if you have one of them blocks gets blocked yeah. in there, they yeah. cause them to lose the hole. Which <clears throat> they went ahead and spayed her while they had her in there. Yeah. She wasn't a good mama dog to start with. I just didn't want her dying, but I'd bred her to them mother beagles. That I was one of your rabbit hounds, wasn't it? Yeah. You used to have some good rabbit hounds. I'd, but she wasn't a good mama. I bred her a couple times before. She wouldn't raise her puppies. She'd, she'd have them puppies about like you said that. Did miracle? She just walk off. And walk off and leave. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, miracle didn't want babies. I'm hoping, and I'm pretty pretty sure she bred again. At this time, she'll be mature enough to. Yeah, might be. Accept it, but last time she, all she wanted was Ivy. <laughs> Ivy. Yeah, I was, I was telling my folks she'd come <clears throat> over today. Maybe we get back down there and let the, everybody come down and pick on you because you loved it. 
last week, or the last time you was over, Miracle trying to butt you out of his chair. Duke wanting to give me a hard time, and Ivan slips up behind you. Yeah. Well, that dang bitty goat run his little hooter out there. <laughs> I thought, well, he's going to start trying to pee on everything around here. Himself, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he would. Yeah. He comes up to me out there in the pen. He ain't so bad right now because nothing's in season, you know, so he's not yeah. like constantly doing that. Yeah. Because when he does, man, he you can smell him for a mile. Oh, yeah. Oh, he stinks. But he'll come up there, he ain't sneaking now, but he'll come up and want to love on me. Yeah. Want to rub his little head all on me, and I'm thinking, oh, you nasty sack. Yeah. Get away from me. I'll come in the house, and, and, and Brandon said, you need to take a shower. Yeah. Right now, because I, sm I, I, I smell that goat. Blame the old billy goat. Yeah, and I don't smell him so much because I'm out here all day long with him. Used to it. Yeah. But somebody else would. <laughs> Folks, I'm going to cut this video off because <clears throat> uh, we had a great visit right here beside Heidi today. And because, like, what I'm doing and my plans, they thought it was a good idea. Uh,. We had some private conversations about Heidi and how she and what she was like, you know, all these times that uh, all the fun we had and, and how good she was about different things. And it was just a good time to sit here by her and, 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 and visit. And a uh, little bit of an update, Kim and G should be home in a couple of hours. <clears throat> they so far no problems their car uh, I think I told you about their problem they had with it but it's a rent car and it, but they're trying to get in and I think so far it's doing okay and uh, we've sat out here with these guys stop y'all not going to wrestle the fight in my lap and I loved it I loved it <laughs> that little goat little Mary Jane jumped up and cut his lap <laughs> I loved it Hey, it scared him to death. He, ah. But it was a fun, a fun day, a good day. I'm, I'm glad he came. It, it really helped me. Cousin and I grew up together, and we think a lot alike. That's probably scary, but we do. And we've always been able to talk, and you know about everything. I guess you know, and. Uh, really a good guy. Really a good man. Uh, anyway, I'm going to cut this off. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, here I am rubbing my nose. I'm sorry. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Share it with a friend, maybe. Uh, tomorrow. I already got a video posted for tomorrow, I think. But, uh. And I may get this one out for you on Tuesday, okay? No, no, I'm, I'm sorry, no. You'll get this next Sunday. My Sunday videos are always a week behind, okay? And uh, so this will be next Sunday's video. <clears throat> tomorrow, Tuesday, tomorrow's Monday. Tomorrow's Monday, and Elijah's supposed to be here and Ben both, and I think we're going to try to get this fence painted. Uh, I may go to town and get the stuff I need to start shaping her a grave site. Uh, if I don't, I'll do that Tuesday. I don't need their help on that. They can get everything else done. And uh, we'll see how much we get done with these, both of them here. I love you guys. Y'all take care and hope you enjoy this. <laughs>